Uh, many thanks for inviting me here today. This is my first exchange of views with you, as your presence has said, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. Since my appointment as Commissioner for Agriculture and Rural Development, I have visited numerous regions of the EU and met with local and regional representatives, as well as agriculture and food stakeholders. European agriculture is at its core about family enterprises, local communities, and regional diversity. The role of the Committee of the Regions is therefore very important in relaying to Brussels policymakers what's happening at local and regional level. As you are aware, I firmly believe that European agriculture can play a central role to drive growth and jobs and the overall sustainable development of our rural areas. But we will only achieve these goals if regions take ownership of the policies behind them. So I look forward to hearing your views in this regard. I'm also looking forward to discussing with you simplification of the CAP, as well as the current situation in agricultural markets, as your President has outlined. Market difficulties and price pressures in recent months have been a cause of real concern for farmers, particularly in the dairy and pig meat sectors. And in response to these difficulties, the Commission earlier this month announced a 500 million aid package, a very sizable amount of money, but I suppose it's never enough. This is a significant statement of support by the Commission for European Agriculture, and it happens to be within the MFF. And I know Finland will be very interested in that as a net payer. I'm happy to provide further detail on the package later on our exchange if you would like me to do so. But like you, I believe agri-food agri is a key strategic sector for our economy and our society. There are 25 million farmers in our 28 member states and 47 million people working in the food industry. So we are the largest employer in the European Union. And I believe we can build on this. The agri-food sector in rural areas can make an even greater contribution to job creation. And to make this happen, we must have the right policy mix at European level, but we must also provide member states and regions with the flexibility that they need to tailor those policies to fit their specific needs and potential. The international context is favourable. World food demand is growing. And if we exploit these opportunities at global level in a smart and strategic way, EU farmers are well placed to meet this demand with their safe, sustainable and high quality products. The agri-food sector is the fourth largest export sector in the European Union. It increased the value of its exports by 70% in the last five years, which is faster than overall EU exports. And the current economic crisis has proven the high resilience of the agricultural sector, not only in maintaining jobs and economic performance, but in continuing to provide a broader contribution to the economy due to linkages with other sectors. And these, ranges, these range from fertilizers to processing to research and development and beyond. Given this unquestionable economic importance, European agriculture needs to and deserves a modern support framework. And the reform CAP is making a difference in many areas, but we need to do more and do so faster if we are to truly empower the sector to be all it can be in the 21st century. Five years ago, we endeavored to make the CAP fairer, more efficient, more effective, and give farmers the tools to take advantage of global market opportunities through a stronger market orientation, find sustainable solutions to increasing production while respecting our natural resources, our environment, and our climate constraints, and contributing to the holistic development of our rural areas by creating jobs and supporting local communities. These changes have led to improvements across the board, and I look forward to hearing more from you about what works, and equally important, what doesn't work in specific regions. We must work together to ensure that all the opportunities contained in the new CAP are fully realized. In the short term, we'll have to conclude our national and regional rural development programs. 79% of all of the budget of the rural development program is now allocated. And by the end of November, all of your rural development programs will be, appro will be approved. Investment for job creation and growth will represent 50% of those particular monies in the rural development program. The potential of financial instruments needs to be developed further as well, and we will have to intensify the simplification agenda in order to minimize the administrative burden and cost for farmers and agribusinesses, enabling them to make better use of their time and their resources. Enhancing the sustainability of production at each level of the supply chain, taking into account resource availability and environment imp impacts, are very important. Equally, research, innovation, and knowledge transfer, and adapting that knowledge and in and and innovation and knowledge to the farmer is very important. 
I want to, to deal specifically with the question of simplification. As you mentioned, as the President has mentioned, it is an issue that comes up now and, all, and always in any discussions we have. I want to reduce the administrative burden to the farmer. I want to make the cap simpler for our hard-working people who have, to tr who have to deal with these situations in all weathers. My thanks to the committee for your draft opinion on simplification, which I was grateful to receive earlier this year. But allow me to give an overview of the actions taken so far. We did an internal screening of the CAP and the DG Agri, and we assessed the measures with simplification and subsidiarity potential. Member states, we have asked member states, European Parliament and stakeholders like yourselves uh, for ideas and proposals. This resulted in 800 pages of proposals. We are currently assessing all of those contributions uh, based on the, received on the basis of the three guiding principles of, uh, for the current simplification exercise, namely that any actions should respect the policy framework that was agreed by the Council of Ministers and the European Parliament in 2013, concentrate on what benefits farmers and other beneficiaries, and not jeopardize the sound financial management of the CAP expenditure. The result of this internal screening and the proposals by you and others are being integrated into a simplification package and planned actions, which I expect to publish in the coming weeks. These are all at the level of Delegated Act, Implementing Act, or guidelines. The first package I've already adopted was two regulations pr providing a one-punt extension of the deadline for aid applications. Because we had a new common agricultural policy, many of your member states and regions have difficulty in meeting the deadline of the 15th of May. We extended that to the 15th of June in a pragmatic way in order to help farmers to be able to avail of this uh, support that we have. We also provided more flexibility in relation to eligibility conditions for voluntary coupled support for animals. The second package contains six changes to direct payment guidelines, which made clarifications in relation to the EFA layer, to the land parcel and identification system, to the issue of defining adjacent ecological focus areas, the compensation of EFA in case of wrong declarations, and permanent grassland. These changes are applicable already in this year, and there is more to come in the coming weeks. A third package will provide for simplification on integrated administration and control system, the Young Farmer Scheme, and the voluntary coupled support at the level of Delegated Act and Implementing Act. Discussions with Member States have already begun, and indeed in the Parliament today we are discussing these issues. And I hope to have some of those measures in place for claim year 2016. A fourth package scheduled for spring 2016 will review greening and cross-compliance and present proposals for simplification. On market measures, our aim is not only to drastically reduce the number and complexity of Commission-level rules to the new CMO regulation, but also to ensure real simplification for farmers and operators alike. Several simplification packages on the CMO will follow in the coming weeks and months, including on public intervention, private storage, member state notifications, licenses, fruit and vegetables. As for rural development, once the progr programming process is completed, the focus will be on implementation, including a better take-up of the simplified cost options, e-governance and financial instruments. I want to come back to your opinion, your draft opinion. I would like to thank the Committee of the Regions and particular Rapporteur Councillor Buchanan for taking the initiative to draft up a comprehensive submission. It's a valuable contribution, as I said earlier. And many of, of your suggestions would require amendments to the basic acts. These suggestions uh, we can, we can be taken into consideration for the future discussion on the CAP post-2020. However, as they touch on the current political framework, I cannot translate them in the short-term simplification actions for the current exercise. Uh, the main points from your opinion, I just want to refer to them. As you point out, one of the distinctive features of the new CAP is the increase of flexibility available to member states and increased regionalization. The Commission is of the view that flexibility is a tool that can deliver on simplification as well. Simplification really is a joint responsibility, a shared management approach between member state, region and the Commission. Our assessment shows that member states' choices in the area of direct payments and rural development tend to complicate the cap more than necessary for farmers and other beneficiaries. And this is a clear example of the so-called gold plating of the rules in some member states. On your concern regarding the consistency between pillars of the CAP, the Commission is aware that both pillars aim for similar objectives. However, let me remind you that the measures available in Pillar 2 are complementary to the ones available in Pillar 1, which only sets the minimum objectives. The Commission does share your view that overlaps between the two pillars should be avoided, and we will work to streamline the legal framework.
Mr. President, agriculture is confronted with long-term challenge of meeting the growing global demand for food while ensuring overall sustainability. In a nutshell, agriculture needs to produce more with less and with less impact on our natural resources. In line with the principle of policy consistency, a key founder of the Juncker Commission, the CAP is working together with other EU policies to offer solutions in this regard. Both pillars of the CAP support measures which aim to ensure sustainable agricultural practices and the production of public goods. In addition, the Farm Advisory System aims to help farmers meet EU rules for the environment, for the public and animal health and welfare. And the EU Research Programme, Horizon 2020, promotes a knowledge-based agriculture and the European Innovation Partnership for Agricultural Productivity and Sustainability is bridging the communication gap between farmers, researchers and agribusiness like never before and facilitating the transfer of research results to economic operators and the deployment of new technologies. Agriculture is involved in the renewed effort to build a resource-efficient circular economy and is working towards a revised policy package on the circular economy that the Commission aims to present before the end of this year. We are also supporting member states and stakeholders in their efforts to reduce food waste by helping to remove obstacles and promoting the sharing of best practices and the transfer of knowledge and expertise. In the current dynamic global context, agriculture and the food chain need to, be, need to adapt. As President Juncker put it in the State of the Union speech, there is something wrong in a market when the price of a litre of milk is less than the price of a litre of water. And he has called on European and national competition authority to take a close look at the structures of the market, and he mentioned the retail stage in particular, and has been a key priority for me since my appointment. And I support this action on the President's part, and I assure him that I, it will get my full attention. The Commission is conducting an in-depth analysis of the whole food chain, which will focus on market structures as well as the resulting market behaviour and its impact from farm gates to retailers' shelves. With this in mind, we are setting up a task force on improving agricultural markets, which will be announced next week, and I intend to announce uh, these details uh, with a view to having the work done within one year. I would like to conclude on a positive note, Chairman. Today I wish to deliver the message that farmers and the agribusiness in Europe's regions can face the future with confidence and ambition. The EU is now the world's biggest trader of agri-food products, with exports totaling 122 billion euro and imports of 104 billion euro. Of course, there are difficulties, and I mentioned those last March. In March, I said that there would be volatility in 2015 and that there would be difficulties in 2015. We have had an increasingly positive trade balance since 2010, but last year we maintained a good export performance in spite of the Russian ban. High value added products, in particular our famed regional origin products, have contributed strongly to that trade surplus. This bodes well for the future and I believe that there are great opportunities for our farmers and our agribusinesses on global markets. Today I've given you an overview of how current as well as future policy instruments can maintain the CAP as a generator of jobs and growth in the 21st century. You, the representatives of local and regional authorities, have a key role to play uh, in relaying this information and your experience of these matters to us and what, com what communities are experienced at local level, especially in terms of reducing administrative burden and embracing innovation. You can help to bridge what is often perceived as the gap between Brussels and the rest of the EU by channeling information, sharing our observations and helping us to make informed decisions and dealing with reports like you have and opinions like you have done on the case of simplification. So I hope that this overview gives you a sense of where we are at the moment, and I reiterate my in invitation to you share your views on simplification and other CAP measures from time to time. Thank you for your attention.